Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hujuana and today we have my top 10 armoured vehicles. It will include tanks, but there's other things in here that have other roles, like APCs or reconnaissance. What will not be included are land ships and anything with legs, which I also excluded from last month's sci-fi tanks video. First up in 10th place is the HK tank from the Terminator. It's another one of those briefly seen things from the future and what an imposing sight they were. Huge tracks, massive torso type thing and bright spotlights glaring out at the ruins around them, searching for targets. In terms of practicality, they're probably actually pretty good considering what they're meant to be fighting against, as they're pure anti-infantry units with a terrifying battlefield presence. A great vehicle just like the HK Aerial, and clearly in the same design language as the other Skynet machines. In ninth place is the Lightning from Planetside 2. This low profile and speedy tank only had a single seat, so anyone could hop in and be at full effectiveness unlike the MBTs of each faction. Yes, the Lightning was less capable than one of those big tanks, but they aren't as expensive to spawn, so it was easy to help contribute to an armour push. They also got the Skyguard, a dedicated anti-air gun to help dissuade aircraft from messing with your friendlies, and I spent a lot of time in one of those blasting away at all those annoying things buzzing around. Problem is, it was hard to ever actually kill any of them because it's so easy for aircraft to just leave. Thinking about it, this is probably where my dislike of close air support in War Thunder really started. In 8th place is the first of two EDF tanks from Red Faction Guerrilla. The Earth Defence Force has a number of very nice craft, and the game in general just has a really appealing art style for its vehicles, be they military or civilian. In particular though, I really like the missile launcher variant of the main battle tank. Those big triangular prism launchers with the petal-like doors that open up and just absolutely spam out missiles all over the place, utterly devastating everything it sees in an endless stream of explosions. It's got that winning combo of looking cool, and being awesomely fun to play. Seventh place goes to another EDF vehicle that I adore, but for completely different reasons. The APC is an absolute monster of a wheeled vehicle, a hulking beast that looks incredible thanks to its huge wheels with a cool triangular tread, and the general shape of it is just awesome. It's verging on brick, but not quite, and is similar in style to the modern wheeled APCs like the Boxer, Itan, or Amphibious Combat Vehicle, but just sci-fied up. Compared to the missile tank, it may seem like it's fairly limited in functionality, with only a little turret, but its sheer mass makes it very useful when dealing with destructible buildings through just ploughing into or straight through them. A brilliantly fun vehicle, and you get the chance to use them way more in the game. In 6th place is the Tumblr from the Nolan Batman movies. This was a fantastic new look at the Batmobile that took it from being a fairly goofy sort of thing into a serious vehicle, based on a fictional prototype military concept for making bridges. A completely bonkers idea, but damn if the tumbler isn't awesome! It hits all those Batmobile notes that you just can't help but love, even simple things like the huge tyres. It's got all those extra bits on its tool belt like a James Bond car, the gadgets like radar and deployables, the ability to shift to different modes like stealth or to fire the weapons. But it's got that air about it, that seriousness that makes you want to believe it could be real, much like the Nolan Batman films themselves. And of course, it has the Batpod, which is just a completely insane addition for a military vehicle, but man if it wasn't awesome. Starting off the top half of the list in number 5 is Halo's Scorpion. Now, I may not be the biggest Halo fan, but I can't deny the Scorpion is amazing. It is absolutely iconic, it is THE quad track tank. Sure, the tracks may not necessarily make a huge amount of sense, but they do look incredible, and far more so on the Scorpion than on many other sci-fi tanks that just kind of look stupid with them. They're just so damn thick, and they look great as they articulate up and down as you traverse terrain, which kind of makes up for not being able to see the suspension working on the road wheels. Overall, it's low down, wide, and fun as hell to play with, taking on anything that the games can throw at you, and it totally earns its name with the uncrewed gun turret. In fourth place is a tank from Warhammer 40k, which has a lot of vehicles, and the vast majority of them are a little goofy and over the top. That's absolutely fine, as that's entirely what they're supposed to be, but there is one exception. One singular vehicle that I love because it goes above and beyond, managing to nail the line between being cool and referencing World War II designs, whilst also possibly being the most sensible thing in the entire setting. That is the Vindicator, a siege tank built on the Rhino chassis, but armed with a massive double demolish a cannon, protected behind a gigantic dozer blade. This thing has one purpose, obliterating buildings, be they in the way of an advance or some form of fortification, and is clearly based on the Sturm Tiger and its massive 38cm rocket mortar. This role is still important today, though done with different vehicles. In the anachronistic world of 40k though, the Vindicator makes perfect sense. 
I dread the day Games Workshop comes up with a repulsor version of it armed with far too many superfluous weapons, keeping the dozer blade on a craft that can practically fly, and some poor dude permanently welded into his gunner position sticking out of the bottom or something. In third place is one of the very rare tanks in Star Wars that actually looks like a tank, the Trade Federation's AAT. That doesn't mean to say it's not Star Wars-y, it's definitely got a unique flair to it with its general shape, especially the big semicircular nose with its missile launcher things in it, as unnecessary as they feel. It's just packing too many weapons into something that already has a capable weapon on it, but hey, it makes it feel special. Though it is peculiar that it's a regular ass tank that needs a crew, in use by the Trade Federation that clearly can have droid vehicles. One of the big flaws the AAT was supposed to have was the stupidity of its battle droid controllers, so why not just skip a step and make the tank an actual droid that isn't an idiot? It doesn't stop it being great though. I remember I think in the original Battlefront game on the Moss Eisley map, if the Trade Federation captured the big hangar they could get an AAT to spawn. This gave them a huge advantage over the more open part of the map, but thanks to it being able to hover you could do a bit of tank parkour and get it into the infantry only part of the map as well. I had great fun blowing stuff up with the AAT in that game. Sometimes in sci-fi, there's things that end up being on screen for not all that much time, but end up with gigantic amounts of awesome lore behind them, and they're often in James Cameron films. My second favourite fictional armoured vehicle, the M577 APC from Aliens, is one of those things, making a huge impression on anyone who saw the movie, with its unique, low-slung and chonky appearance thanks to being built around a real air tug. Like basically everything from that movie, it's supremely iconic. It gets delivered out of the belly of the Cheyenne dropship. It barrels through anything without a care in the world. Its interior is a fairly major location in the film that has been aped many, many times, and it has these two turrets that hint at a much greater capability than what was shown. And that is where the extended lore comes in, largely from the Colonial Marines technical manual which greatly expanded on literally every single thing about it. There's extra weapons, including alternate ones for the turrets, like a free electron laser or a particle beam, which is some hard sci-fi stuff. Make some noise in the comments if you want to hear more about this vehicle, even if there's not all that many animated visuals to include. And then subscribe too, because I'm probably going to do it anyway. Now, I have a whole bunch of honourable mentions to get through, in no particular order, starting with some more things from 40k like the Land Raider and the Tal Devilfish and Hammerhead, whose railgun turret looks a lot like the one from the tank in Tron. Star Wars also has way more cool vehicles, but the standout ones for me are the TX-130 for many of the same reasons as the AAT, and the MTT because it's huge and elaborate and mad. Some unconventional ones you probably won't expect now, like the Spectrum Pursuit vehicle from Captain Scarlet with its backwards facing driver's seat, and the Rhino 440 tank from the Machine War in Timesplitters. To round things out, we have the Prism and Mirage tanks from Red Alert 2, Shager Hod from Metal Gear Solid 3 for being utterly unique, and the various War Thunder April Fools event vehicles, particularly the Dotter with its pair of enormous proximity fuse guns. And my favourite armoured vehicle is, of course, Mass Effect Mako. It's an amazing, gorgeous design, clearly inspired by the wonderful works of Sid Mead, especially his sadly unused concepts for the rover in Mission to Mars. It's iconic, the big tyres, the jump jets and its insane ability to climb hills before falling over and breaking one of the front tyres. And the machine gun with more obvious controls than the gigantic cannon it's attached to. I love it all, and so do many other people, to the point where they actually referenced it in the games. More so than most things on this list, the Mako has character, largely down to the combination of wacky physics and ridiculous explorable terrain. Not even the relatively normal levels with flat ground are immune from Mako chicanery, as Goomba stomping on Geth armatures was just the optimal way to deal with them. Going beyond the sillier stuff though, it's actually a decently designed vehicle for its role as scout vehicle. It's got the exact same vibes as something like the French AMX-10RC, big wheels and a big gun. It could certainly do with having more visible sensors on it, but that might spoil its nice clean lines, or require texture detail that just wasn't possible for the time. But those are little details, and lacking them does not bring down the mighty Mako. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon where you can get our Space Fighter design reference book. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by giving us super thanks or by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters and thank you for watching.